The Loon Bawang, formerly known as Trusan Murat or Southern Murat, is an ethnic group found in central northern Borneo. They are indigenous to the highlands of North Kalimantan, Krayan, Malinau, Mentarang and Long Bawan, Brunei, Temburong District, southwest of Sabah Interior Division and northern region of Sarawak, Limbang Division. In the Malaysian state of Sarawak, the Loon Bawang through the term Murat are officially recognized by the constitution as native of Sarawak and are categorized under the Orang Ulu people, whilst in the neighboring state of Sabah and Krayan Highland in Kalimantan, they are sometimes named Lundaya or Loon Day. In Brunei, they are also identified by law as one of the seven natives indigenous people of Brunei, through the term Murat. Nevertheless, in Sabah, Kalimantan and Brunei, the term Loon Bawang is gaining popularity as a unifying term for this ethnic across all region. There are also other alternative names such as Loon Lod, Loon Ba and Loon Tanaloon. Loon Bawang people are traditionally agriculturalists and practice animal husbandry such as rearing poultry, pigs and buffaloes. Loon Bawangs are also known to be hunters and fishermen. Etymology The word Loon Bawang means people of the country or native people, whilst Loon Daya means upriver people or people of the interior or Orang Ulu and Loon Lod means people living downriver or near the sea. Other names are derived from geographical reference to their rice cultivation, for example Loon Ba. Swamps, who lives near swampy areas and grow wet rice, and Loon Tana. Loon on the land who cultivates dry rice. While insisting that they never called themselves Murat, the Loon Bawangs were formerly identified as Murat by the British colonists and by outsiders other ethnic group. In Loon Bawang language, the word Murat either means to massage or to give dowry, and these meanings have little or no relation at all to the identity of the people. The name Murat might have been derived from the word Murad, a mountain located near an old Loon Bawang settlement, hence might have just meant mountain men or hill people, but was instead used by the colonists to identify this ethnic. In addition to that, ethnologists found that the classification under the name Murat is confusing as the term is used differently in Sabah, Sarawak and Brunei, that is whilst in Brunei and Sarawak it is used to describe the Loon Bawang people, in Sabah it is used to identify an ethnic group that is linguistically and culturally different from the Loon Bawangs. In the early 1970s, the use of the term Loon Bawang began to gain popularity amongst ethnologists and linguists, and it is now the most commonly used term to identify this ethnic group. In Sarawak, the decision to replace the term Murat to Loon Bawang to identify this ethnic group was made unanimously by Loon Bawang community leaders, and the official usage of this term is now legally binding following the passing of Interpretation Act by Sarawak's Legislative Assembly in 2002. Topic <inaudible> Origin. Topic. The Loon Bawangs made up of one of the ethnic natives that occupied the Borneo island for centuries. According to Tom Harrison 1959 and S. Runciman 1960, the Loon Bawang community is one of the earlier settlers in the mountainous regions of central Borneo and they are related to the Kelabit tribe. Both tribe are linked to a common lineage termed the Apo Duat or Apad Uat people, of which Apo Duat is the area consisting of the Kryan Highland and Kelabit Highlands. One theory suggests that Apo Duat is the homeland of this common ancestor, and that they have expanded out to the coastal area. The migration of these people to the lowlands and gradual spreading out might have been spurred by various waves of migration of the Loon Bawang people from different clans. The migration of Loon Bawang people from one clan to a region already inhabited by another clan, causes the latter to move to another region, despite them having similar culture and language. The strong clan identity of the Loon Bawang people is shown by their common tradition of identifying themselves based on their village or geographical location, for example, Loon Adang, who once resides the Adang River Basin or Loon Kemelo, who comes from the Kemelo River. One other theory suggests that these Apo Duat people were once natives of Old Brunei, but were pushed upriver into the highlands by the invading tribes such as Kayan, Kenya and Aban people. The ones that remained downriver Loon people were isolated from the ones who migrated to the highlands Kelibet, causing their culture and language to slightly diverge. 
Another theory, on the other hand, suggests that the migration originated from the opposite side of Borneo now East Kalimantan. It was suggested that the Apo Duat people were once farmers in the lowlands downstream of Malinau River, living closely with the Taidong people. However, attacks by Muslim raiders Bugis and Taosug, probably in the 17th century, caused them to migrate to the Kryan Highlands, whilst the Taidong people converted to Islam. Nevertheless, these theories have yet to be proven and there are no substantial evidence to trace the origin of the Lun Bawang people or to prove any of these theories. History Topic. Topic. Relations with the Kingdom of Brunei Topic. According to Brunei oral tradition, the Lun Bawangs were brought under the rule of the Brunei Kingdom by peaceful measures during the reign of Awang Alak Baitatar. This is said to be accomplished through dealings between the Lun Bawang and Awang Alak Baitatar's brother, Awang Jerambak. Under the rule of the Brunei Kingdom, the Lun Bawang were subject to taxes and tribute. The local leaders from the higher class Lun Mebola or Lun du were appointed titles of nobility and were granted office in the Sultanate. Some Lun Bawang were assimilated into Malay culture. Lun Bawang community located near to the Brunei capital were firmly integrated to the Brunei polity. Awang Alak Baitatar and his thirteen brothers were the founding fathers of Brunei, and are believed to be half Marus, as they had a common Murat father by the name of Upai Samaring or Awang Saman. These fourteen Sodaras or fourteen brothers are Kelabit and their followers were early empire builders of Brunei. Lun Bawangs and Kelabits are of royal descents from the House of Bolkia, as they use titles such as Diang, Sultan, Agong, and Penjiran, names used by their ancestors in the past. Nevertheless, the peace dealing between the Lun Bawang and the Brunei Malay rulers was by no means everlasting, as throughout the history of Brunei Sultanate, the Lun Bawang had often rebelled against its Brunei ruler. It has been suggested that the insurrection of the Murats i.e. the Lun Bawangs, and Chinese had led to the Brunei Sultan requesting assistance from the Sulu Sultanate to suppress the rebellion in 1658, which resulted in the Brunei Sultan ceding his territory of Kamanis until Tapian Durian to the Sultan of Sulu as a sign of gratitude. <laughs> Lun Bawangs with European settlement Early Europeans uses the exonym Marut, Marut, Morat or Murat to describe the Lun Bawang people, and this might have been introduced by the Brunei Malays who came in contact with them in Brunei. The earliest European written account of the Lun Bawang people is probably by Thomas Forrest during his voyage to New Guinea, the Moluccas and Balambangan in 1776. He described that the Borneans sick, i.e. Bruneians tended to preclude the Chinese or European from directly dealing with the Marut in trade, reserving the trade as middlemen to themselves. In John Hunt's sketch of Borneo or Pulo Kalimantan in 1812, he described the Lun Bawangs as aborigines of Borneo proper, and that they are much fairer and better featured than the Malays, having more strong and robust frame and are credited as a brave race of people. Europeans have also obtained the description of the Lun Bawang from Brunei Malays who came in contact with them. For example, during the voyage of the American Himala to Brunei, Brunei noblemen Panjaran reported that there are 21 tribes in Brunei, Murat being one of them, and that these tribes are Kafir do not practice Islam and practices headhunting. During Henry Keppel, expedition to Borneo, he noted that the Lun Bawang are inhabitant of Borneo interior, and that the Murat and Dayak people had given place to Kayan people whenever they are in contact with each other. Sir James Brooke in his journal written on 24 December 1850, described the oppression that the Lun Bawang then called Limbang Marus people faced by Brunei aristocrats, and where some had fought against this tyranny. A more elaborate European account of the Lun Bawang people is by Spencer St. John in 1860, where he described the impoverished condition of the Lun Bawang then called Limbang Marus people under the rule of the Brunei Sultanate. He also gave account of the Aborigines Murat and Basaya rise to insurrection, however these rebellions were always suppressed by threat by the Brunei government to bring in Kayans to subdue the opposition. 
Spencer St. John also described the tyranny conducted by the Brunei aristocrats upon the Limbang Marus, which includes seizing their children to be sold as slaves if taxes were not paid, and on one occasion, when the Brunei capital were in a state of alarm by the marauding Kayan warriors, the Brunei aristocrat offered a whole Limbang Murat village to be pillaged, in return for the safety of the capital. Culture and economical activities Topic. Almost all of the traditional economical activities of the Loon Bawang and are related to rice plantation, and they cultivate both rice on hill called Lati Tana, Loon and rice from paddy field called Lati Ba. The production of rice is related to one's prestige, financial status, as excessive rice harvest are traditionally consumed in huge Irau feast, signifying wealth and fortune. Cooked rice is wrapped inside banana leaves called luba laya, and rice is also brewed into rice wine or burek for practical reasons. Partly due to this, drinking burek had been an important and also notorious, as is deemed by the Christian missionaries and the Brook government custom of the Loon Bawangs, but now the rice wine production has significantly dwindled due to effort done by the Christian missionaries and Brook government to encourage prohibition of alcohol amongst the community in the early 20th century. Meat and fish are brined or pickled using salt and is stored in hollow bamboo stock for a duration of a month and the pickled food is called telu. Single quote dot. Meat and fish are also preserved by smoking. Salt is obtained by evaporating brine from salt spring Lubang mine. Cattles and buffaloes are bred for their meat, and can serve as a symbol of financial status. These animals are commonly used as dowry that are presented to the bride family from the groom's side. In the old days, the men wear jackets made of tree barks called kuyu talon. Cloth wrapped around the forehead is called cigar and loin cloth is called abpar. A long machete pelepe is tied to the waist, especially when it needs to be carried to tribal wars. As for the women, they wear pata on their head, beret on their waist, bane around the neck and gilling or pakelas worn as ornaments on their hands and wrists. Pata or cap made entirely of bead, is worn as a status symbol. The Loon Bawang belong to a group termed as Nulang Ark Group Metcalf 1975. These ethnic along with other ethnics such as the Barawans, the Melanaus and the Kajangs traditionally practiced an ancient tradition of secondary treatment of the dead. In Loon Bawang, this is called Midang Buding. Metcalf theorized that this practice is a characteristic of the most ancient cultural tradition in Borneo, before the arrival of other invading ethnics that influenced the diversification of culture and language in Borneo. Language The Loon Bawangs called their language Buri Loon Bawang or Buri Tao single quote, single quote, our language. Single quote, single quote. Topic: Festivals and celebrations. Topic: Loon Bawang people celebrate Irau Aco Loon Bawang Loon Bawang Festival annually on the 1st of June in Lawas, Sarawak. This festival is traditionally a celebration of the rice harvest, but now it showcases a variety of Loon Bawang culture and events such as Ruran Uling Beauty Pageant Contest and Nagiup Suling Bamboo Musical Instrument Band. In Sipadang district of Sabah, Sabahan Loon Bawangs and Lundaya celebrates the harvest festival Kaamadan biennially during the festival of Gada Gassing and Tamu Besar, during which traditional dances and costumes are being showcased along with those of other native ethnics in the district such as the Murat, Kedayan and Brunei Malay people. Being a predominantly Christian community, Loon Bawang also since the 1950s traditionally celebrates Irau Raya, which is an Easter festival and celebration. Topic. Religion Topic. Loon Bawangs were mostly animist before the 1920s. Under the rule of the White Rajas in Sarawak, Christian missionaries particularly of the Borneo Evangelical Mission had better accessibility to the Loon Bawang settlements in the interior and highlands, and proceeded to preach Christianity to the Loon Bawang people. The majority of the Loon Bawangs are Christians, predominantly of the Borneo Evangelical Church. A small number are of other Christian denominations, such as True Jesus Church, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the Roman Catholic Church, or of another religion, such as Islam and Buddhism. 
Topic: <laughs> Standard of living. Topic: Prior to the rule of the White Rajas, the Loon Bawang tribe was in a deplorable state, frequently involved in tribal war, headhunting and excessive alcohol consumption. The Loon Bawang tribe were often a victim of political manipulation by the Sultanate of Brunei, for example they were used as sacrifice for the marauding Kayan people who threatened to attack the Brunei capital in the 1860s. The low standard of living had led to severe outbreak of diseases cholera and smallpox amongst the community, and the population significantly dwindled to the point of near extinction in the 1920s. With the advent of Raja rule and conversion to Christianity, the standard of living improved tremendously, as the missionaries introduced better healthcare, sanitary system and also proper education system. The Loon Bawang were very zealous at school, and in 1940, about 95% of the Loon Bawang and related Kelabit tribe under 20s in Lawas Damit are literate. The Borneo Evangelical Mission movement has played a major role in a social and economic development of the Loon Bawang community, especially in educating the people on the importance of education and health, also in maintaining peace between Loon Bawang people and those from other ethnic living nearby. Whilst many Loon Bawangs attained higher level of education in nearby towns such as Lawas, Limbang and Miri, and in Sabah, Sipatang and Beaufort, and subsequently furthering their studies in the state capitals or in peninsular Malaysia, there are still relatively little development of schools in Loon Bawang settlement in the interior, such as Long Pasia or Ba Kelalan. Therefore, many Loon Bawang youth in the interior travel a distance from their home in order to pursue education, sometimes via river transport or gravel road. Job intake in some of the main industries in Sabah and Sarawak, such as oil and gas and palm oil industry remains relatively small, and some are still involved in subsistence farming and fishing. However with continued efforts, many of them manage to become professionals. A 2011 statistics has shown that there are around 233 graduates amongst the Loon Bawang community in Sarawak. Notable people. Topic. Topic. Sarawak. Topic. Henry Summa Gong from Lawas, Sarawak, the former Deputy Minister of Domestic Trade, Cooperatives and Consumerism of Malaysia, and incumbent member of the Parliament of Malaysia for the Lawas constituency, P222 Lawas. Baru Bian from Lawas, Sarawak Ministry of Works, Malaysia, member of the Sarawak State Assembly for Ba Kelalan N81 Ba Kelalan and Sarawak PKR Chief and Chairman and the Parliament of Malaysia for Selangau Consistency P214 Selangau Federal Constituency. Racha Umang from Lawas, former president of Borneo Evangelical Mission, member of the Sarawak State Assembly for S42 Lawas and former member of Dewan Rakyat of the 4th and 5th Parliament of Malaysia, representing P154 Limbang Lawas constituency and P154 Bukit Mas constituency respectively. Mutang Tagal from Lawas, former member of Dewan Rakyat of the 6th and 7th Parliament of Malaysia, representing P-154 Bukit Mas Federal Constituency, P-177 Bukit Mas Federal Constituency, respectively. He is currently the Honorary Consul of Romania in Sarawak. Balang Lasung from Long Samado, Sarawak, former national javelin thrower who had won four gold medals for Malaysia in 1977 Kuala Lumpur Sea Games, 1979 Jakarta Sea Games, 1981 Manila Sea Games and 1983 Singapore Sea Games respectively. Sabah OKK Malak Bongau from Sipatang, Sabah, native chief of Sipatang, member of Sipatang Local Authority and United Pazak Mamogun Kadazan Organization Old UPKO party chairman for Sipatang Division in the 1950s until 1960s. Rani Harun from Long Pasia, Sipatang, a professional footballer for Malaysia under-23 team from 2003 until 2006. He played in 2006 Asian Games, 2004 Olympic Games Qualifier, 2003 Sea Games and 2005 Sea Games and currently is the captain for Sarawak FA. Mafri Balang from Sipatang, Sabah, former Malaysian football player for Sabah FA, Malacca FA and Kelantan FA. 
He is currently the captain for Penang FA team. Topic: <laughs> Brunei. Topic: Fadlan Galawit from Batu Apoi, Temburong, former professional football player for Brunei FA and DPMM FC, winner of 1999 Malaysia Cup. Topic: References. Topic. <references>